What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode. We're at Dean's today. Double Club Diesels. And uh, we're working on his Brockway 358. We're gonna be doing some brakes today and some uh, hub putting back together. So yeah. So Dean's gonna tell us a little bit about how he got this truck and uh, what he's gonna be doing to it. Take it away. Don't mind the background noise. There's a frack going on like 50 feet up there it's all day truck has got a 555 uh triple nickel v8 coming like 200 this one uh, spec to 210 horsepower uh there's turbo versions that'll go up to like i think like 270 but it's i think it's a 10 liter i'm pretty sure correct zach if he's wrong with that one yep <laughs> i'm just kidding but anyways um it runs awesome it's mint it's got gold interior everything about this truck is actually factory um except for the mirrors are not factory and uh this this lube refiner is actually not hooked up the engine was switched over these engines actually there is an eyelash in my eyeball son of a all right so this engine actually uh, has been updated and it has a spin-on oil filter. I don't remember the number. I have one for it. They updated the housing like there's a cooler on the side of the block on the other side there. Um, and then on the bottom of the cooler there's, a, there's usually a cartridge or just a plate that has two lines that come out of it. And those two lines are supposed to go to this lube refiner now all the older guys that i talk to say they don't know why they got rid of lube refiners because think about it you have your oil running into here with a big sock on the outside of the truck so when you're driving at 65 miles an hour this is getting cooled right down uh they say that these were the best things since sliced bread i've talked to a lot of guys about it but this truck's been updated probably for easier serviceability um Less oil cons oil consumption, I guess. I don't know. Plus, you got these long lines that run in there, and I don't know if you ever dealt with hydraulic lines or oil lines, but sometimes they leak or burst while you're driving down the road. You know what I mean? So, but it's got a 20-speed transmission in it. It's two four-speed boxes. Um, try to keep it nice and sweet. This is a four-speed, or certain not two four-speed boxes. That's the other transmission over there. This is a four speed with a five speed main. And um, it's pretty cool to shift and how it shifts. Um, if you guys follow, if you guys follow my page, eventually I'll talk about that once it's actually getting it going, but I don't, don't have time for that. But so these fenders real quick, cool thing about these fenders is that they are factory. I actually, when I first looked at the truck or saw pictures of the truck, I didn't think they were factory because they're diamond plate. I've seen guys make diamond plate fa fenders for these trucks. The 358 would have came with either fiberglass or steel fenders, but it is extremely rare to have a 358 with what they called construction fenders. These fenders don't swing out. I was told they're supposed to. It's all factory hardware on it. They do not swing out. Brockways. Most of all, all the 300 series and 200 series um, fenders swing out. They're, they're on a big pin. Uh, but these ones are factory, which makes it really, really cool. And because they're diamond plate, I'll paint, repaint someday, repaint these gold. And I want to get polished aluminum diamond plate angled fenders for the back. But uh, it's only got one fuel tank. A really rare thing that a lot of people actually don't see on these trucks. I don't know it's rare but it's unseen for 358s would be a battery box right here normally it would be a fuel tank uh, but this is a battery box factory painted diamond plate this is the factory latching and everything this is factory even this exhaust shield is factory has the maker mark up top and everything so I, I would like to polish this up um, but we're gonna get at it with brakes and stuff Zach's the guru on it I uh I even mess with them too much. So yeah, we'll get to it here and show you what we're doing. Yeah, don't forget, we gotta take this ring out. I, uh... You li you left it on there when you put the jack stand. Yeah. So here we started cleaning the uh, 
backing plate up. I cleaned these out with a little wire wheel so the rollers would fit in there right. Uh, it took a little bit of time because it was pretty rusty, but we got it. Put some anti-seize in there and put the rollers back in. And here you can see that started pulling off the nuts for the can. The top one was a pain in the butt and I couldn't get a ratchet on it, but the bottom one I could. And then I proceeded to take the C-clip that holds the slack adjuster on, took that off, and then here we started taking, trying to take the slack adjuster off. So this is just the beginning of like a giant process. Uh, you can see here, here we're heating it up. And trying to cut it off eventually because it was just taking forever. So Dean's cutting it. Then we're using the air hammer. And it really wasn't getting anywhere. So we just started doing some more cutting and then now Dean eventually gets it off here in a couple minutes. And it's off. But there's still the inner piece to take off. This was seized. Like we thought once we got the slack adjuster off, like, oh, it'll be easy to get this piece off. Nope. So we did some more cutting, and the hard part about this is cutting this sleeve off that's on the inside of the slack adjuster without marring the uh, S-cam. So we did some more cutting, and then we thought here we could pull it off, and then nope. So we used the uh, air hammer a little bit and did some more cutting. And we got it. Well, guys, it's like 50,000 degrees out here, but oh, stop. we made it through like 10 pieces later. We got it apart and we got the can off. So setting up the new can, before we cut this, we have to mark from the face of the can to the top of the clevis, which is inch and three quarter, and to the bottom of the clevis where this jam nut sits. So the bottom of the jam nut is at inch and three quarter. No, sorry, three quarters of an inch. So I came over here and I marked it with the Sharpie. So then we can cut this and always leave your nut below where you're cutting. So you can run the nut back over it and take off the, uh, the rough edge. So you can put your clubs back on there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that. And then we're gonna clean this S cam up so we can throw the slack adjuster on there. Show them the inside. All right, we got the uh, slack adjuster on there. S cam's back in. We got the uh, can ready to go on, so we'll throw that on. Throw the pins in it. Throw, throw the brakes on there, and assemble the hub. All right, guys, we got the bearing. Dean oiled her up. We're gonna throw it in there, spin it around a couple times. Now we got the seal. Hopefully it's right. I'm gonna get her seal, put her in her 2000. Hold the phone. Well, that went well. It's gotta be straight. Are you sure? So when you're putting these in, the way you know that they're all the way in is if you noticed before it hit the bottom, it wasn't jumping. So when I hit it right now, this whole thing right here is gonna jump. See how it hopped up off there? All right. If you say so. I'm just kidding. Good job, team. 
here it's just a simple process of uh, putting together the brake shoes, uh, throwing the pins in there so the springs can hold to the shoes, and then putting the shoes on the truck. And here I turned the S-cam so it was easier to put the ring on. Doing a good job, Dean. Keep going. Thank you. There, it's on. I don't know how I'm gonna do that one by myself. You'll get it. Never. Okay, we're ready to put this together. Got our bearing covered in oil. Then we have our inner nut. All right, the inner not gets torqued to 250 to set the seal. How do you know that? Because it's the spec for a double nut, double lock nut. Um, Dang hub? Yep. Upper trailer? Yep. What and about truck. one with an axle? And truck. Same thing? So, well, right. gotta turn the torque wrench on. I might start on the exhaust sack, okay. to be honest with you. 250 foot pounds and you back it off one to two turns. Double check it. Now back it off. Loose. Spin the hub. And then we're going to torque it to 50 foot pounds. So it's 250 and then back it off and do 50. Right? Yep. Yep. For the inner nut. Now you have your lock washer on, has this tab, this slit right here, and there it fits just perfect. It doesn't fit perfect the first time you can flip it over and the holes oriented different, but it sits right the first time. If they don't fit either way, you always tighten the nut until it fits through one of the holes. And now our outer nut is going to be just a single torque of 250. To sandwich it right in there. Huh? To sandwich it right in there, right? Yep. I had my work truck when I pulled the other side apart. I was like, hey Dean, you should stop. Uh, my work truck doesn't have the, the axle nuts in it. And so I was like, hey, Dean, you should stop. And I was like, you know what I do have in my work truck? Nice chisels. <laughs> so that's what that's I do. That's how everybody else does it. <laughs> but now this truck's going to be super fast.
Now we can put the uh, axle shaft in. All right, guys, it's together. Ish. I'm missing two things to to have the wheels on and get it moving. Number one, the wheel. And the second thing we're missing is the C clips, or C clip singular, that holds the uh, slack adjuster on there. But Dean will get that this week, hopefully. Yep. Yep. So the last project of the day was putting the exhaust together. So Dean had to make a pipe going back farther, and then we had to go out, and then we had to go up. Uh, the tough part about exhaust, if you've ever worked on it, is nothing ever lines up. So it's a lot of cutting and fitting, and cutting and fitting, and putting it back on there and taking it off. But eventually we get it here. Well guys, we're putting together the finishing touches. When I say we, I mean Dean. I'm gonna put this coupler on here and some clamps and then we can get her started up. Well guys thanks for watching uh, if you like the video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe